My name is Maria Jalakar. Welcome to my show, Let's Talk About History. Today I'm here at Old Sturbridge Village and um, we're going to see President Adams and his wife read love letters and also there are some reenactors representing the Redcoats and the, co and the, uh, the Colonial Army from the Revolutionary War. I hope you enjoy my show. Thank you.
will not be We are on a journey, you and we. We will start and finish in the present year of 1801, but we will travel back on a path that takes us near 40 years into the past. Now, Mrs. Adams and I are currently old, but we have not always been so. The newspapers have lately said that John Adams is old, bald, Toothless, querulous, querulous uh, crippled and blind. I am not crippled. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Adams and I have suffered numerous painful separations during our marriage. During one of these separations, whilst I was in Philadelphia and she in Braintree, she wrote to me, I want to say many things I must admit. It is not fit to wake the soul by tender strokes of art, or to ruminate upon happiness we might enjoy, lest absence becomes intolerable. I wish you would burn my letters. 
And I replied to her, Is there no way for two friendly souls to converse together, although the bodies are 400 miles off? Yes, by letter, but I want a better communication. I want to hear you think, or to see your thoughts. You bid me burn your letters, but I must forget you first. You must keep our letters, chiefly to yourself, and communi communicate them with great caution and reserve. I shall advise you to put them up safe and preserve them. They may exhibit to our posterity a kind of picture of the manners, opinions, and principles of these times of perplexity, danger, and distress. And now, in the year 1759, I wrote to my dearest friend Richard Cratch, a watchmaker of Braintree, the following letter. She has raised in my imagination a sense of pleasure my pen cannot describe, and which seems to be grappled to my soul with hooks, as immovably as I wish to grapple in my arms the nymph who gives it all its ornaments. If I look upon a law book, true, my eyes are on the book, but imagination is at a tea table, seeing that hair, those eyes, that shape, that familiar friendly look. I go to bed and ruminate half the night, then fall asleep and dream the same enchanted scenes till morning. Unfortunately, that was not written about the future Mrs. Adams. <laughs> no, it was written about a woman with whom I expected to propose marriage, but was prevented by fate. Uh, the same aforementioned Richard Cratch, to soothe my fears and, 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 and feelings, took me with him as he courted the eldest daughter of the Reverend William Smith of the town of Wayne. And it was there that I first set my eyes upon the middle daughter, young Abigail, Nabby as we called her. And in the words of Tacitus, thus all the rest is history. 